We're going to dive in. We're the fourth or fifth, I can't remember, doesn't matter, week of this series called The It Factor. And here, here's kind of the premise of this whole thing, just in case this is the first time you've been here for this series or as a refresher. But there are some people, and not all, but some, who when you see them, when you watch them, when you're around them, there is something that is obviously different. Something that is hard to define, but it's very easy to discern. You can see it with your eyes. You hear it in the words that they say. You see it in how it is that they live their life. When you're around them, there's just something that is different about them. They have this joy that can kind of transcend circumstances, that even when craziness is going on around them, even when it's like all hell is breaking loose in the world, like in 2020 and a few times in 2021, they had this ability to be able to just kind of rise above it. They're not oblivious. It's like they are able to just really live this life that God intended for them to live. And it's rare. You don't see it everywhere. If you saw it everywhere, that would be amazing. And hopefully after today and after this series, you will see it more. But there are just some people that are like this. Have you ever seen these people? Say yes. The truth is, is that there is a reason that some people have this ability. There's a reason that some people seem to have it. And what I want to do is I want to talk about what it is because it is not just a positive outlook on life. There's a lot of people that have a positive outlook on life, but they don't have it. There's a lot of people that they have this ability to have a great attitude, but an attitude is part of it and positivity is part of it. But it's deeper than that. It transcends that. There's something more to it than just that. And so what I want to do today is dive into what it is that we're talking about when we talk about it. But I want you to know I want this message, like I do every week, my goal at least, is for every single message to be extremely practical and not just theoretical. The reason I want it to be extremely practical and not just theoretical is because if you don't know what to do with it, then we're wasting our time. I want you to walk out of this room or away from your television, however it is that you're tuning in, I want you to walk out of here saying, I can do that. My goal is never for you to say, whether it's me speaking or someone else, the goal of a communicator should never be that you walk out saying, that person is smart. I want you to be able to walk out saying, I'm smart enough to do this. That's the goal. And so hopefully throughout the course of this message, we'll talk about some things practically that can help you to be able to not just know it when you see it, but so that you can personally possess it as well. And I forgot to do something that I need to do before we dive into this message. I already welcomed you at Freedom Church, but today uh, we're doing something a little bit different, and the Freedom Church family needs to welcome the Life Church family who is tuning in from Michigan right now as well. So go ahead and put your hands together for them. And I'm excited. I'm excited about having you with us. I'm excited about jumping in. Uh, to this message today. Paul in the Bible kind of describes it, and I'm going to let him describe it, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Here's what he says in Ephesians chapter 5. He says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Now, he wrote this a long time ago, a couple thousand years ago, and it sounds as if he is sitting here a couple weeks ago writing this. He says, the days are messed up, people are crazy, and the days are evil. Therefore, as a result, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And he says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. And that's a term, be filled with the Spirit, that maybe if you've been in church for a while, you've most likely heard the term. If you haven't been in church very long, which is actually a, a very large percentage of the makeup of this place called freedom, that might not be a term that you've heard a lot about. But this term being filled with the Spirit, the question is, what does that really mean? And Paul kind of describes it. I don't have time to read all the verses, but Paul does do a good job of describing it, but he does it in an unconventional way. He says, if you want to know what it's like to be filled with the Spirit, I need to illustrate it for you. And when Paul illustrates it, he actually uses a drinking illustration to help get the point across. And he's basically saying, I know that a lot of you know what it's like to be under the influence of something. In this case, under the influence of alcohol. 
He says, if you're under the influence of alcohol, there's going to be things that you say that you wouldn't normally say. There's going to be things that you do that you would not normally do. And I know that we're at church and, uh, and I know that you're probably thinking like, I wonder if he knows, here's the truth. There's a lot of you who know what I'm talking about already. He, he makes this point very, very clear. If you don't and have never been down this path yourself, number one, stay on that path. But number two, you know, cause you've seen it and you've seen how sometimes being under the influence can cause a normally sane person to do stupid things. It can cause them to say stupid things. It can cause them to behave in a way that they would not naturally behave. And Paul says, in a similar fashion, I don't want you to be under the influence of alcohol, the wrong thing. I want you to live your life under the influence of the Holy Spirit, who is the right person. Live your life under his influence. And when you live your life under the influence of the Holy Spirit, it will not cause you to go down the road you weren't intending to travel, but it will cause you to do things you wouldn't naturally do, and it'll cause you to say things that you wouldn't naturally say. It'll cause you to respond in ways that you wouldn't naturally respond because it enables you to live not a natural life, but a supernatural life whenever you're filled with the Holy Spirit. So it accomplishes a lot of the same things for a different purpose and in a completely different way. Does this make sense? And that's why Paul used that as an illustration because he wanted everybody to be able to understand it. He's like, I'm just going to go ahead and go all in. I'm going to use alcohol as an illustration because everybody will either know it or they will have seen it and they will be able to put two and two together. He says, so I want you to live your life being filled not with alcohol, but being filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give you the boldness that you need to live the life that God has empowered you to live. And you will find yourself, whenever you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you will actually start surprising yourself in a positive way. We all know what it's like to surprise ourselves in a negative way. I mean, there's times something, has something ever happened and you respond and you're like surprised at how crazy your thoughts were or even how crazy your actions were. This happens a lot. This happens to me. This happens to you. This happens to me a lot in athletic competitions because I am extremely ultra competitive and there are things that occur and when they occur, I will respond and it's like an outer body experience. I don't even know that I did it, but I'm seeing myself do it and I cannot stop it. Has that ever happened? I know it's never happened to you before. You love Jesus way too much for that. That has happened to me before, uh, but when you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you will do the same thing, but in reverse, more often as you move forward. So for example, somebody will say something to you and previously you would have punched them in the throat, but this time you actually responded in a way that was gentle and kind. And when you did, you looked around because you surprised even yourself. Normally somebody, says something that would have typically set you off and instead of responding negatively or instead of responding the way that you naturally would, you actually find yourself having compassion and you didn't even mean to. That's how surprising it is. Has this ever happened to you before? Maybe it's never happened to you. I don't know. Based on your responses, it's only happened to like a half person that's in this room. But it has happened to me at times where I'm like, wow. I didn't lose it. Praise the Lord. I did not lose it because a year ago, I would have lost it. I'm not yet where I want to be, but I am not where I used to be. That's a good sign. And here's what it means. It means that I'm living my life under the influence of the Holy Spirit. I'm not yet where I want to be, but God is progressively making me more and more like Jesus. That's what happens when you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And so what I want to do, because some of you, you're like, the Holy Spirit, uh-oh, he's going to start talking about weird things, because I went to church whenever I was seven, and there was this one weird lady, and all she ever did was talk about the Holy Spirit, and she had tambourines and flags, and she waved them and ran around in circles, and I don't want anything to do with the Holy Spirit, because I do not want to do that. I do not, I don't know how to use a tambourine, and I do not want to use flags. Why, why is this? I don't want to do that. Listen, the Holy Spirit is not weird. Do you understand? The Holy Spirit is not weird. People are weird. Don't blame the weird 
Don't blame the Holy Spirit for the weird person. There are some people that are weird with or without the Holy Spirit. They're just flat out weird. Some of you, I love you, but you're weird. You do weird things. You say strange stuff. You're weird. God love you. I love you. And other people love you, but you're odd. And that's not God's fault, right? That's, that's just your fault. You're weird. And that's okay. That's wonderful. But the Holy Spirit, I want to show you what it is that he actually does. Because if I can demystify it for you, you will be able to take advantage of the resources that are already at your disposal. Because a lot of you, you're praying for things that you already possess. Let's dive in. Here's what the Holy Spirit does in your life. The Holy Spirit, the first thing he does is he reminds you. He reminds you. He's like the reminder app on your phone. He reminds you. For me, I only use the reminder app to remind me to cancel things that I have subscribed to for the seven-day free trial. That's why I use the reminder app. I say, Siri, remind me in six days to cancel blank. That's all I use the reminder app for. Other than that, I use a thing called a calendar like a normal person. The reminder app is to remind you to cancel stuff is to remind you of random things that don't make the calendar, but they're still kind of important. Remind me to feed the dog because this is happening, or remind me to grab so-and-so because Devin normally doesn't and she's out of town. Remind, you know, that kind of stuff. That's why I use the reminder app. The Holy Spirit functions a lot of times in the exact same way. John chapter 14, verse 26, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, watch, and will remind you of everything that I have said to you. In other words, there are a lot of times in our life where we do not need to learn more. We need to be reminded of what we have tended to forget. And so you're, you're discouraged. Maybe you wake up and it's, you know, have you ever heard people say, I'm, you, you talk to them, it's 8 a.m. They're like, I'm having a bad day. How are you having a bad day? It is 8 a.m. <laughs> but anyways, that's a whole nother subject. You're discouraged. You're this, that, or the other. The Holy Spirit will remind you, even if you don't feel like it, you are loved, you are accepted, you are worthy, you are forgiven, that you are loved by God that you are actually liked by God. It's not just that he loves you because he is contractually obligated to do so. He actually likes you as well. He will remind you of that. Now, let me tell you why this is super important. The reason it's super important is because I hear people say all the time, the Lord, the pastor, who needs to talk to you is the Lord. He never speaks to me ever. The Lord never, he speaks to everybody else. He never speaks to me. It's like he's silent. The Lord never talks to me. God never talks to me ever. Listen to me. Every time, you think something good, God has spoken to you. Every time you feel like you should encourage somebody and you do it, God has spoken to you. Every time you encourage yourself, that's God speaking to you. Every, every time you respond the right way, it's because God has spoken to you. The reason you didn't realize that he was speaking to you is because we have so mystified his voice that we have attributed God's voice to our intuition. Anything good that comes from you has come from God. Say, so how do you know? Because you're so jacked up, you don't randomly think of good things. Any good thing that comes from me comes from God because I am so jacked up just like you. I'm just the one with the microphone. I'm messed up just like you are. I need the touch and the voice of God. So anytime I do the right thing, God did that. And so here's what it shows me. Even in those seasons where it feels like God is more silent than he is at other times, I still know that he's speaking. And when you know as a follower of Jesus that he's speaking, you won't be as discouraged. You won't want to run from God or you won't feel as shame filled because he will consistently be speaking into your life that he loves you and that he's proud of you and that you are worthy. Not because of who you are, but because of what he has done inside of you. He reminds you. He brings promises to your mind. It's not, this is how 
This is how we can begin to make a shift in our mind. Anytime we think about the promises of God, it's not a truth remembered as much as it is a person speaking. A person, the Holy Spirit, has spoke that into your spirit. And as a result, that was the voice of God in your life. That's one of his jobs. I, I could do, I should have done a whole series on this. This should have been six. This one message should have been six weeks of a series. But for sake of time, I got to keep going. That was the number one. Number two, not only does he remind you, he guides you. He guides you. He is your guide. He is not your travel agent. He is your guide. There is a difference between those two things. He is your guide. John chapter 16, verse 13, but when he, the spirit of truth, that's the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will guide you into all the truth. The Holy Spirit does not just give you flyers about how awesome the destination is going to be and then leave you up to yourself. He guides you. When I, I've been to Israel five times, I think. I'm going back whenever I'm allowed to go back to Israel. Right now, nobody's allowed in. But when I go, guess what I have? I have a guide. Usually, four out of five times, my guide, one of them, there's usually two, one of them has been a lady named Gila. She's the one I like the best. That's why I use her name instead of the other guys. Plus, it's much easier to say. And it starts with a G, and I need it to be similar to the word guide. But when I go, everywhere I go, I just follow the guide. When I wake up that day and we go to breakfast at the hotel, I look to Gila. And I say, Gila, where are we going? She says, follow me. You know what Gila does? She goes and gets on the bus. So you know what I do? I go get on the bus. Gila sits down. So you know what I do? I sit down. When the bus stops, guess what Gila does? She stands up and she walks off the bus. You know what I do? I stand up and I walk off the bus. Gila starts talking. I start listening. Everywhere Gila goes, I go. If Gila goes to this sandwich shop versus that sandwich shop because she says the falafel over here is better, that's where I go. Why? Because I'm following the guide. The guide knows better than I do. The guide is more familiar with where it is that I'm trying to go. The guide has my best interest at heart. The guide is there to be able to make sure that we have the greatest opportunity possible to learn as much as possible, to experience as much as possible. She just asks of us, follow me because I am the guide. Now, if you want to get lost, you know what you should do? Stop following the guide. Go off on your own. Do your own thing. You will get lost. You will not experience as much. If you follow the guide, the guide will bring you in the direction where you were supposed to go. In the same way, that's what the Holy Spirit does. Here's what he says. Follow me. Follow me. Like, I don't want to follow you because your directions are odd. I prefer, like my Waze app, I prefer to be able to hit the thing at the top so that I can see all the different places where I'm going to eventually go. The Holy Spirit, the guide, doesn't do that. He only gives you the turn-by-turn -turn instructions because he is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. He barely gives you enough light to take the first step. All he lights up is where your foot's going to land as it's landing. Why? Because he wants you to follow the guide. He wants to see if you have enough faith to follow. And we all know, those of us that have been alive long enough, more than two years, those of us who have been alive long enough, we all know what it's like to choose our own path and to get on that path, get halfway down it, and be like, wrong path. The reason we're on the wrong path is because we didn't follow the We trusted our instincts instead of trusting the guide. His job is to guide you. And when you trust him enough to let him guide you, he will bring you on a journey that you would have chosen for yourself if you were smart enough to have chosen it. He, his plan for your life is better than your plan for your life. His plan for your life is the plan that you would have chosen for your life. 
if you were just wise enough to choose it. The problem is we're not wise enough to choose it because his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. As high as the heaven is above the earth, that's how much higher his thoughts are than ours. As a result, what do we do? I submit to the guide. And anywhere the guide goes, that's where I go. I'm going to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Does this make sense so far? That's what Paul is trying to help us to do, and that's what the Holy Spirit's job is is to do. And I am not talking fast enough, but I'm going to blame it on you. You're not listening fast enough. Number one, be, he reminds you. Number two, he guides you. Number three, he helps you. He helps you. He is the helper. Matter of fact, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 says, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. Every single follower of Jesus in this room, watching online, whether you're in Georgia or in Michigan, every single follower of Jesus has been given a gift. You are gifted. Every single person that's here, you are gifted. And that gift that you've been given is not just for your benefit, it's for the benefit of the people that are around you. God helps you so that you can be a help to other people. One of our jobs, one of our goals at Freedom is to help you develop your gifts. I want you to know that you're gifted, and then I want you to develop that gift so that you can use it to actually help others. That's why we do this thing called Growth Track. I think, I'm pretty sure, we have Growth Track today at 2 o'clock. Now, with, we do. So Growth Track today at 2 o'clock. Some of you, you didn't sign up for it, but you should have signed up for it. And if you didn't sign up for it, but you want to go to it, don't listen to the lie that says it's too late because I'm going to do something. Every once in a while, I have a few privileges around here, and here's one that I will use. If you have not signed up and you're not supposed to go to Growth Track, show up, and when they say, why are you here? Your name's not on the list. Say, Pastor JR personally invited me, and he said that I can get in. And you know what they will do? They will say... Okay, Pastor JR said that they have to let him in. So guess what they're going to do? They're going to let you in. In the same way that we only get to approach God through the person of Jesus, you can approach Growth Track today through the person of JR, and I will pull that privilege for you so that you can take advantage. Why? So that you can develop the giftings that God has put inside of you. I want you to see that the Holy Spirit has given you a gift. Every single person here has been given a gift by God. And what I want is the natural inside of you to, to sit there and have a collision with the supernatural of God so that you can use what it is that may be the gift that's been lying dormant inside of you for far too long. I don't have time for this. Number one, he reminds you. Number two, he guides you. Number three, he helps you. Number four, he empowers you. He empowers you. Here's what's awesome about that. He doesn't just give you the command he, give you, he gives you the resources to pull it off. That's good news. He empowers you to do it. You hear, maybe you've heard me say, you have what it takes. That comes with the caveat. In Christ, you have what it takes. Apart from him, you can do nothing. The only reason you have what it takes is because as a follower of Jesus, he has already deposited into you anything it is that he's going to call out of you. He's never going to overdraft. If he comes at you with a demand for you that seems beyond your capability, he will never ask of you what you have not already been equipped to do. The fact that you are asked is proof that you are able because you're a follower of Jesus, the gifts that you need and the resources that you need are already inside of you being empowered by the person of the Holy Spirit. Do you see? Being a person that's filled with the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that you have to wave a flag in the back of the room. You can, but there's more to it than that that exists at a very practical level. He says in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, and those of you that, I know it's Valentine's Day, maybe some of you have a baby in the oven still waiting to come out. If you're still looking for a name, I have a great one for you. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. I want a baby Zerubbabel somewhere in this church very, very soon, within the next nine months. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Here's his word to Zerubbabel. 
not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. In other words, here's what he's getting at. How do I live the life that God has called me to live because it seems impossible? Because the world is crazy. So how am I supposed to live this life? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. In other words, you cannot do it on your own, so you might as well just stop trying. The only way you can have it is by my spirit. It's not by your strength. It's not by your effort. It's not by your ability to try harder and harder and harder. It's by yielding to the person and the power of the Holy Spirit decision after decision after decision. He empowers you to do it. And then number five, he never leaves you. He never leaves you. No matter what. Even when it feels like you've left him, if you're a follower of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will never leave you. Even when you've turned and run the other direction, even when you've been in the middle of a bad season for years, the Holy Spirit will never leave you if you are a follower of his. John chapter 14, verse 16 says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. That's why, I don't know if you know the story, but Jesus, whenever he was walking around on earth in bodily form, meaning he was actually physically present here. He was getting ready to die. And before he was getting ready to die on the cross for our sin, he's meeting with his boys and he tells them, it is better for you for me to leave because when I leave, I'm going to send you a helper. In other words, when Jesus, when I leave, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. Now they were like, that's, that's silly. That's not better. You're better. He says, no, 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 you're misunderstanding. I don't know if you know this. When Jesus was here in bodily form, he could only be at one place at one time. So in other words, he, if he was here in Georgia, he could not be there with you in Michigan. If he's with me in Ackworth, he couldn't be with you in Kennesaw. One place at one time. But he says, so when I leave, it's actually better for you because you're going to get the Holy Spirit who can be with each of you wherever it is that you are. In other words, I can be with J.R. in Ackworth and I can be with you in Kennesaw and I can be with you in Michigan and I can be with you at your basketball game while I'm with you at your volleyball game while I'm with you at your baseball game. I, I can be with you wherever it is that you are. You can't outpace me. You can't outrun me. If you're a follower of Jesus, there's nothing you can do to get away from me. Now, you can push him down to where it feels as if he is dormant, but he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He'll never turn his back on and what will happen instead, go back to this illustration at the very beginning of the message. Being filled with the Spirit means that you will start to do what He naturally does instead of what you would naturally do. The Holy Spirit does not make me better than you. The Holy Spirit makes me better than me. The Holy Spirit doesn't make you better than me. He just makes you way better than you. The people that have it, it's technically not an it that they have. What they have is a person. And the person who is yielded to the Holy Spirit, decision by decision, from a natural standpoint, they will seem to be living a supernatural life. But here's the odd thing. That supernatural life, the only reason it seems out of the ordinary is because we aren't living the ordinary life that God has called us to live because to Him, the out of the ordinary supernatural should be the natural and ordinary way of living. It's just that we have fallen so far What's normal seems amazing. The 
Holy Spirit is the only one who can do it. He's the one that turns hate to love, stubbornness to understanding, dissension to unity. It doesn't mean it happens like that. It's a progression, day by day, decision by decision, one step of faith at a time. It means that, like I mentioned a moment ago, February 2022, I'm going to be a better version of me than what you're getting in February 2021. I should be a better husband. I should be a better dad. I should be a better friend. I should be a better leader. Not even because I'm trying to do those things, but because I'm trying to be yielded more and more to the Holy Spirit of God on a day-by-day -day basis. I'm increasingly moving in the right direction. Not because I'm all that, but because God is all that, and He has provided me with a person, the Holy Spirit, to be able to pull all that off. His power can become my power. His power can become your power. Some of you, I know how you are. People, we just live in a world where everybody's so used to getting beaten down all the time. So some of you, you're thinking, there's no way I could do that. That's not for me. That's, that might be for you. It's easy for you to say you're a pastor of a church. You've been doing this a long time. No, no, no. It's not, it's not for me. It's for you too. It's for me. It's for you. It's for everybody. It's for the people on the mountaintop, the people in the valley, and everybody in between. It's for the person who's been a follower of Jesus for 50 years and the person who's been a follower of Jesus for 50 minutes. I don't know enough. I don't know enough about that. I don't know if I can do all that. Listen to, listen to this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, that I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. In other words, my message was simple. I didn't come here to impress you. I came to you in weakness, with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. In other words, it's not Christ and me. Christ in me. It's not me working for God. It's God working in me. Christianity is not a concept or a theory to master. It's a person to walk with. That brings me to the last one. The Holy Spirit, He is pleading with you. He's pleading with you. If you're already a follower of Jesus in this room, here's what He's pleading with you to do. He's pleading with you to yield to Him. He's pleading with you to change seats in the car because some of you you have you have Jesus he's in the car he's just in the wrong seat you have Jesus he's over here in the passenger seat but you got your hand on the wheel it's Jesus and you that's not the way that this is supposed to go you need to get out of that car you need to do one of them fire drill things when the lights red and you and Jesus need to switch seats you know what I'm talking about? If you don't, that's probably good too. You need to switch seats. Jesus, take the wheel, for real. And let him guide you in the direction that you're supposed to go. To where it's not, oh, Jesus trying to give me directions. I'm going to go straight anyway. No, let him have the wheel so that he can bring you in the direction he wants you to go. And you can adjust your life around his word instead of trying to manipulate his word in order to fit your life nobody in our culture ever does that that's a whole that's that's like seven series in a row right there he's pleading with you he's saying just yield yield to me let me be the guy let, here's what the lord is saying this is what the lord is saying i this came to my mind the lord is saying let me be your gila let me be your guide. I will take you on the greatest journey you could ever imagine. But you got to follow me. Light unto your feet, a, a lamp unto your feet, a light unto your path. One step in front of the other. 
progressively moving in the direction that I've called you to go. And when you get to the destination, you'll look back and you'll say, what a ride. Maybe, maybe though, you're here and you're not yet a follower of Jesus. The Holy Spirit's pleading with you too. But he's pleading with you in a different way because what he's saying to those of you that are not yet a follower of Jesus, what he's saying to you is, you need to stop trying to do this on your own and you need to turn your life over to me. The whole reason Jesus came to this earth, lived a perfect, sinless life for 33 years. He died on the cross for your sin and mine. My sin placed on Jesus' shoulders, all the things I've ever done, said, thought, hung on that cross with Jesus whenever he died for me. He died the death that I should have died. He paid the penalty that I should have paid. They buried him in the ground for three days, but after those three days, he conquered death, hell, and the grave by being risen from the dead. And when he was risen from the dead, he proved who it is that he said he was. And through his resurrection, I too can experience a brand new resurrected life. You see, Jesus did not come to this earth so that bad people would become good people. Jesus came to this earth so that dead people could become living people. And what he wants for me is the same that he wants for you. If you are not yet living, meaning you are still dead in your sins, separated from God, he can change that in an instant. And if you're ready to say yes to him today, that's, that's not me pleading with you. That's the Holy Spirit pleading with you. And right now, I want you all over the room to bow your head and close your eyes. If you're here today and you're ready to respond to what it is that God is pleading with you to do, you're ready to say yes to Jesus, you're ready to put your trust in him right where you are, I want you to just pray this prayer with me as I pray it out loud. Just pray it in your own heart and say, Lord, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. And as a result, Lord, I'm asking you to save me. I turn from my sin and I'm turning to Jesus. I want you to be my Lord and Savior from this day forward. I'm asking you to make all things new. With your head still bowed and eyes still closed, if you're here today and you prayed that prayer with me, or maybe you're in the room, you're watching online, if you're in the room right now and you prayed that prayer with me in just a moment, I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, you're going to raise your hand high. I'm not going to call you out or embarrass you. Nothing like that. Nobody's even going to really see you except for me. But I want to be able to celebrate the greatest decision that you could ever make. If you're watching online, when I say three, you can either raise your hand with an emoji or you can type right there into the comment section saying yes to Jesus. However it is you choose to do it, I want you to be able to respond as well. So if you're here today and you said yes to Jesus, this is your time and this is your moment. When I say three, you raise your hand high. You ready? Without any further ado, one, two, three. Who in this room today? I see hands. I see hands all over the room, actually. That's awesome. At least four that I saw put your hands down. If you're watching online, just type saying yes to Jesus, however it is you want to do it. Y'all do me a favor, stand to your feet all over the room. If you're watching online, especially, you can do this if you're in the room too, but if you're watching online and you said yes to Jesus, I want to get this book to you. And so the best way for me to do that is for you to type the word free, F-R-E-E, to the number that you'll see up there on the screen. And when you do, we'll be able to make sure we mail this thing to you. If you're in the room, you can do that. Or on your way out, you can go to the next steps area and just say, hey, I need one of those books that that pastor guy was talking about. And uh, they'll make sure they put this in your hand. You'll know it's the next steps area because it, it literally says um, next steps on it. And so as a result, you'll see it uh, as soon as you walk out this door. Let me pray for you. And then we're gonna do a couple more things. So don't be trying to go nowhere yet. Dear Lord, I love you. I'm grateful for you. I thank you for every single one of these people. And I ask and pray that you would move powerfully in their heart and in their life. Thank you for those that said yes to Jesus. Thank you for those that are gonna walk out of here empowered and ready to take on the world because we know that we're hearing the voice of God, that we're empowered by the Spirit of God. And as a result, we have what it takes to do what it is that you've called us to do. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray.